The next method we'll take a look at is the index of method. Now, if you're familiar with Java, you should already know how the index of method works. This is very similar. Uh, there are a few, well, there is one little difference, but it's not like a, a big deal. But in case you're not aware of what this method does, the index of method will simply return the index of a, of a particular substring. So we're going to say, give me the index of this particular substring within our original string. Now the catch is we're also going to include a starting point for the index. The index of method in Java does not specify a starting point. I think there's a variation that does that, but the original method does not. Here we would specify a starting point. So we have two parameters for this method. The first parameter is going to be the actual substring to find. So we're going to have some string and we need to see does it uh, can we find this in the string and if so we would get the index of where that string starts the second parameter is going to be the index of where we start our search so for example if we make this parameter zero then that means we're going to start our search at the beginning of our string if this was some other value some other index then we would start at that point in the string and go onward to see if we can find the uh, substring in that portion this is kind of like the contains method in that we can use it to see if a particular substring exists. The difference is instead of returning true or false, it's going to return the index if the substring is there. And if it's not there, it would return a negative one. Here is an example of how we would use the index of method. So we see that we have a string variable str that's going to have the string information distortion. And then we have two integer variables, x and y, and both of them are going to store results of calling the index of method. So the first one is going to look for tion. We're going to look for that substring starting at index 2. And then the second call is also going to look for tion at uh, starting at position or index 11. Both of these methods could give us the same value. They could give us different values. It just depends on whether tion is in the string or not. So we're going to do this as an exercise. So I'm going to ask you the result of each call. And then what I suggest is pause the video, see if you can work it out and then resume when you think you have the answer. So my first question is what is going to be the value of X when we're done calling the first index of method call. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So we're looking for the substring TION and we're starting at index two. So if I remember correctly, that means we're going to start at in the uh, F. Yeah, we're going, to look at, so we're going to start at character F in information. And we see that we would find TION right here. And yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, so there's TION right there. And we're going to return the first index of that whole thing. Some people think that you would return a range of values, but notice that we're looking for a single integer. So in this case, we would get the first index of this range. So if I remember correctly, that should be 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is uh, index 7. Therefore, x is going to contain the value 7. All right. So what about y? So if we were to call the second index of method, what would y contain? So here, we're also looking for tion, but now we're going to start at index 11. And if I remember correctly, that's going to be the space right after information. So that means we know that the first, this TION in information is not what we're looking for. We have to start at the space and go onward. And if we look in distortion, we see that TION does exist down here. There it is. And if I remember correctly, 13, 14, 15, the T in that TION is at index 18. And what this means is the Y is now going to contain 18. Here is the same example from before, except now we've changed the substrings that we're going to be looking for. So we're looking for this, but we're looking at it in different places and changing a few things here and there. So we're going to do this as an exercise again. So let's just go ahead and do it. So my first question to you is what is going to be the value of X? or the result of the first call to index of. So we see that we're going to start at index two. 
So that is the F again, and we're looking for DIS. Now there is a DIS. There is a, a DIS right here, but the problem is that D, that DIS has a capital D, not a lowercase d. So even though DIS technically is in our string, it's not the lowercase DIS. So therefore, this substring does not exist in our string. Therefore, X is going to contain negative one. All right, what about the second method call? So what's going to be stored in Y in this case? So we're looking for capital DIS, and sure enough, we do see it's there, but look at where we're going to do our search. We're looking, we're starting at index 19. And if I remember correctly, that is the second I in distortion. So we're going to start here to find capital D and then I and S. So from this point onward, DIS does not exist in the remainder of the string. Therefore, Y is also going to contain negative one. We'll now take a look at the substring method. And this is very similar to how it works in other languages like Java. So the idea with this is we're going to be uh, finding the substring that starts at a particular index. And then we're also given a number of characters. So instead of looking for a substring at the starting point, we're giving a starting point and then we're going to count so many characters and that is going to give us some range of characters in our string and that's going to be the substring that we want. This method takes two integer parameters. The first parameter is going to be the starting index of where we're going to start putting together characters for our substring. And then the second parameter is going to be the actual number of characters in the substring. This is different from other languages like uh, for example, the substring method in Java, you would actually have the starting point and then it goes up to and not includes the second parameter. So the second parameter is actually an index, but the actual starting point is one beforehand. Here, the second parameter is not the ending index. It's going to be the number of characters from the first index to give us our substring. So like for example, if the second parameter was two, then that means the length of our substring is going to be two. We're going to get the two characters from our starting point. Here is our example from earlier with the information distortion string. And we see here that we're calling substring twice. Uh, the first one we have, uh, we're passing arguments zero and six. And then the second call, we're going to pass 12 and seven. And then we're going to store these results in str1 and str2 respectively. So let's do this as an exercise just to see if you can try this out uh, on your own. So once again, I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to pause the video, see if you can figure out the answer and then resume. So my first question to you is what would be the value of str1 with the, with this particular call of the substring method? So let's take a look what we're doing here. The first value in our uh, arguments is zero. So that means we're going to start at index zero. And the second argument is six, which means the length of this substring is going to be six. Or another way we can phrase that is we want to get the first six characters starting at index zero. So index zero is at character I. And then we're going to include N, F, O, R, M. So we're going to include uh, these six characters right uh, here. So that means that str1 is going to have the string in form. All right. What about the second string? So when we call the second substring method, what's going to be stored in str2? So we see here, we're going to start at index 12. So we know we're going to start at, it looks like at the capital D in distortion. And then the seven means we want to get seven characters. So that's going to be, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to get this stored. So that's the first seven characters starting at index 12. This means that str2 is going to have the string distort. 